Hey, welcome to another online service here at Corridor Community Church. I'm Pastor Daryl Drover, and it is truly an honor that you have joined us here online for a service, for a time together of some worship and prayer and looking into God's Word and growing in faith together. I pray and believe that as you join us tonight here on our service online, that you'll sense God's presence and His Spirit with you right where you are. So we're gonna start off with some singing from worship from our service that we pre-recorded last Sunday. And as the folks who gathered here, our church family here in person, Sunday mornings at 10.30, experienced such an awesome experience of God's presence. And I pray it's a blessing to you. Here's just an opening psalm today to speak to our hearts. It says in Psalm 28, Verse six, praise the Lord, he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. So I hope to, today you're able to sing and your heart is so full, it's bursting with songs of thanksgiving as we worship God together. Thank you, Lord. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. Will not fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. Working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high the lowest valley and yes i will bless your name yes i will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days yes i will for all my days yes i will Yes, he's worthy of our praise for all our days. Count on one thing. The same God, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. Will not fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late. He's working, working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley and yes i will bless your name yes i will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days yes i will for all my days yes i will I choose to praise and I choose to praise and glorify, glorify the name of all names that nothing can stand against. And I choose to praise and glorify, glorify the name of all names. Yes, Lord, that nothing can stand against. Yes, I will lift you high. In the lowest valley, and yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy. My heart is heavy for all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. Lord, we'll sing your praise because we know you go before us. We know that you're for us. Who can be against us? Hallelujah. We trust in you today. The weapon may be for, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness, and when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. 
Hallelujah. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God, my God will never fail. Sing it again. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the name of Jesus. Power in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Every war he wages, he will win. Believe it. And I'm not backing down from any giants. Because I know how this story ends. Yes. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm going to see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. If you're feeling tired today, if you're feeling weak. You're feeling lonely. Trust in the Lord today. The battle belongs to him. He leads us in victory. Hallelujah. He goes before us. He makes the crooked path straight. No weapon formed. The weapons may be formed, but it won't prosper. We believe it today, Lord. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because of the God I serve, the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Yes. My God will never fail. You'll never fail, Lord. Oh, my God will never fail. Sing it out. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Yes, Lord, you take. You take what the enemy meant for evil. You turn it around, you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Not in our own strength, oh God, but trusting today in your strength, Lord. Not in our own wisdom, oh God, but trusting today in your wisdom, Lord. Hallelujah. Trusting in your hope, God, in your joy, in your provision. We will see a victory, oh God. We love you today. Hallelujah. Thank you that there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, we pause our service here just for a moment to again offer you an opportunity to give. Let me ask you this. Do you love to give? Do you love to give? Seems like a strange question, but God is looking for people that love to give, that love to be generous, that love to bless and be a blessing to others. God himself is a giver. He loves to give. The Bible tells us he's a good father. He loves to give us good gifts. He blesses us in so many extraordinary ways. And so we can give 
we offer you an opportunity and those who gather here in person as well, an opportunity to give, to give unto the Lord, to give, to do the work of the ministry here that we're doing at Corridor Community Church. And so as you give today, keep that in mind, be a generous giver, love the opportunity today to be able to give and to be a blessing. We truly, truly appreciate all those who give, whatever the amount is, just that it's given in honor and out of obedience to God. Let's pray for a moment as we give today that God would speak to our hearts and that God would be blessed by our giving today. Father, we pause, we thank you for who you are, a good father, a loving father that loves to give good gifts to us and has given us and blessed us with so many incredible things. Today, God, we take this chance to give back to you just a small portion, a small gift that we can give but we give it in faith that you will use it for your kingdom and your glory, that people will be blessed and minister to, and people will come to know you and grow in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash, no checkbook, no problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free? Super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. together and sing out verse 3 and holy Red. 
eternity. Thank you, Lord. We sing holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. All thy works, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Yes, Lord. you this morning. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Yes, Lord. We proclaim that from you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. Lift our voice and sing. You are worthy of it all. You're worthy. You are worthy of it all. Yes, Lord. We believe it. For from you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. Yes, Lord. Sing it again. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all. Yes, Lord. You are worthy of it all. Yes, Lord, you're worthy. For from you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. Yes, Lord. We stand and sing. You are worthy of it all. You're worthy of all, God. For from you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. Sing it out. All the saints and angels, picture it. All the saints and angels, they bow before your throne. Yes, Lord. And all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing you are worthy of it all worthy is the Lamb of God you are worthy of it all yes Lord worthy worthy for from you are all things to you are all things you deserve the glory and you are worthy of it all yes Jesus you are worthy of it all hallelujah for from you are all things to you are all Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Just worship him this morning. Take a moment. Pour out your heart in your own words today that he is worthy of it all today.
Okay, I hope you're ready to journey together through what we're calling our Easter series, The Greatest Event in History. We set up our series last Sunday as we kicked it off, saying that the death and the resurrection of Jesus is the single greatest event in the history of mankind. In the history of the world, there's been nothing else that even comes close to its significance as Jesus' death and resurrection. We thought for the next few Sundays that we felt God would have us to look at Scripture that shows us the power of His death, His sacrifice and resurrection. Not just wait for Good Friday and for Easter Sunday morning, but to each Sunday leading up to Easter, look at God's Word and, and let it shape and mold us and challenge us in our faith. Last week as we dug around in the book of Corinthians, Paul's letter to the church there, how he tried to explain to the believers there about Christ's resurrection and how it applies to the resurrection of the dead. When we as believers die in Christ, but have the hope of living again eternally, being raised again in new spiritual bodies. Today, we're going to look at a statement that Jesus makes about his own death. He spoke about it quite often and John's Gospel is going to be our reading today in John's Gospel chapter 10. If you have your Bible, your app, you can start to head that way as I set you up here for today's topic. Let me ask you this as we begin. Have you ever, or maybe you are right now, renting a home or renting an apartment versus owning one? Or maybe you have in the past rented and now you own one. But you know you know what I mean when I say if you've rented a home or rented an apartment versus owning one. There is a big difference. When you're renting, for the most part, it's looked at as a, as a temporal arrangement. It's temporary. It's not your own. So you likely aren't planning to live there forever. Whereas when you own a home, the likelihood is you value it a little more, you take more pride in your home, in your, in your condo, in your semi or your apartment, whatever it is. You invest in it, you upgrade it, you make changes to it. What about if a friend borrows something of yours? Have you thought about it before or have you had it happen where your friend doesn't take as good care of your item as you would? Maybe it gets damaged, maybe it gets broken or lost. Think about these things as an owner, as someone who has ownership of something versus someone who, who doesn't. Or in our own case, if you yourself, as I said, don't own the premise that you live in, what is your attitude? Yeah, you might like to keep a nice home and still take care of the place you're renting. I hope you do. But if something goes wrong, if something needs to be fixed or replaced, well, it's not really on you, is it? Okay, so Jesus, here in John's Gospel, chapter 10, let's read a little bit of what he says. And as I already alluded to, it, it points to his death. What he says about his pending death and his resurrection is vitally important. John 10, starting at verse 11. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming and he'll abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him. He isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks and scatters the flock. The hired hand, he runs away because he's only working for money and he doesn't really care about the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. Just as my father knows me, and I know the Father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I sacrifice my life so that I may take it back again. No one can take my life from me. Verse 18 in John 10, I sacrifice it voluntarily. I have the authority to lay it down and when I want to, take it up again. This is what my Father has commanded. 
Verse 19. Now when he said these things, the people were divided in their opinions about Jesus. Some said he's demon possessed. He's out of his mind. This doesn't... Others said this doesn't sound like a man possessed by a demon. And can a demon open the eyes of the blind? So... This is an, a very important passage we're reading today and we need God's help and the Spirit of God to help us discern and apply it to our lives. But we begin with a, a fairly simple imagery here of sheep and shepherds. And Jesus begins by saying, the good shepherd sacrifices his life for his sheep. Think about it. A shepherd maybe none of us have ever had the experience of actually being a shepherd but we can imagine and enter into what it might what it might, what it might entail how it might be risky if you're watching over a flock of sheep and then wolves come or other predators come as a shepherd would you be willing to lay down your life to give your life to save your flock of sheep jesus says I'm a good shepherd. I am willing to make that sacrifice. But a hired hand, somebody who's just hired for a job, someone who's just doing it out of, to, to earn a living, to earn money, they see a wolf coming and they take off. They're, they're not sticking around to stand up against a pack of wolves. Jesus says they don't care about the sheep. It's just a job. A hired hand is just doing what he's doing to earn a living. But when you put your life at risk to protect the sheep from the wolves, that's what Jesus claims he's willing to do as the good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd, verse 14 of John 10, we just read. I know my own sheep and they know me. It's a powerful statement. Jesus is saying, I know those that are within my sheepfold, those that are within in my kingdom. We're talking about you and I here as we translate the imagery from what Jesus is saying. The sheep, you and I, Jesus says he, he knows us. He knows us. And we know him. And he is willing to lay down his life for us. We see this because this, this is the basis of what Jesus' claim is to be a good shepherd. He's not a good shepherd because he, because he can lead the sheep to, to good pastures. That's part of it. He's not a good shepherd because he's had so many years of experience doing it. No, that's not it. It's because he's willing to lay down his life. Verse 11, just quickly look from where we just read. The good shepherd lays down his life for a sheep. Verse 15, I lay down my life for the sheep. Verse 17, because I lay down my life. Verse 18, no one has taken my life from me, but I lay it down voluntarily. Four times Jesus makes this same statement. I lay down my life for my sheep. So let's move to another thought from what we read here in John 10, and that is to consider the wolves for a moment, the predators, those things that, that present danger to the sheep. The, the good shepherd, Jesus, is willing to lay down his life when he sees wolves, when he sees a, a danger is coming to us. And what are the things that cause us or have would have caused us danger if we would not have received Jesus protection well we have to look around a little bit in the New Testament to piece it together John 1 and 29 says behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world now by Jesus' sacrifice by him laying down his life on the cross which again points us to Easter in a few short weeks a scene that we typically revisit and, and reimagine. Jesus on the cross, his sacrifice, his death, is protecting us from sin, from the wolves, from the sin of the world. 
John wrote earlier in his gospel account. The Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Our sin was an incredible hazard and danger to us and, and continues to be even after we accept and confess faith in Jesus. But thankfully, because of his sacrifice, he takes it away. He offers us protection from that danger. Hebrews 9, 27 tells us that it's appointed for man once to die, which, which again, we discussed last week. And after that, there's judgment. After that, we understand from Scripture, we stand before God and we give account for our faith in Christ, for our life, for sin, if it is still evident in our lives. But it says that Jesus protects us from death, from judgment. So we don't have to fear facing God anymore when we pass from this life. Our sin can be taken care of because of Jesus' sacrifice and death and judgment no longer have any sway over us. There are many other things Jesus' death provides to us as well. Some of which we know if we know, have an understanding of Scripture from healing and deliverance. Lots of things that Jesus' sacrifice provides to us, but all of the things that we were not able to conquer on our own, He has provided to us by His sacrifice. Verse 18 of John 10 is maybe the most powerful verse of what we just read when Jesus makes this statement. No one has taken my life from me, but I lay it down of my own initiative and here's the line, I have the authority to lay it down and I have the authority to take it back up again. It's incredible to think the Son of God, Jesus, who again we see and we visualize dying on the cross for our sins, for my sins. He says, I voluntarily lay down my life. He wasn't coerced, he wasn't Forced, He wasn't under duress to sacrifice himself. He did it willingly. And even, even more incredible, if we can say that, is that he claims to now also have the authority and the power to take up his life again. This is what causes, this is what causes early first century listeners such difficulty. How does he have, how does he think that he can claim to have the authority to lay down his life, to sacrifice his own life, but also to take it back again, to become resurrected and be raised from death? Jesus' claim to have power over life and death is based on his own divine power and authority. It's interesting, he moves from the hypothetical, from where we envision him telling this when he begins to tell this image, this story, this metaphor of shepherds and sheep and how the shep a good shepherd would lay down their life for the sheep. It's, it's almost hypothetical, like, yeah, if you had to, you might. But now, Jesus is making factual statements. Verse 17, John of John's Gospel, chapter 10, Jesus says, The Father loves me because I sacrificed my life for the sheep. He's talking about it as if it's already happened. And I guess in the sense that there's no time restriction for God or for the Son of God, it has already happened. It's inevitable. It's going to happen in, the, in our history, in our timeline. But Jesus says, I've sacrificed my life for the sheep. I'm willing to do it and I voluntarily do it. I have the authority to lay down my life and then I have the authority to take it back up again. Again, his claims are so extraordinary. People make this assumption. He's either demon-possessed, he's out of his mind completely, or he is genuinely the Son of God. And the statement they make here, as we read it in John 10, they say, how could a demon-possessed person 
heal blindness, cast out a demon of blindness. That, that miracle had just happened in John chapter 9, if you want to skip back and read it on your own time. Jesus does an incredible miracle, healing a man who had been born blind. That's a, that's a key distinction. Someone who, who wasn't born blind, but who later became blind or had deteriorating sight, there were, there were others that could supernaturally pray and lay hands on such a person and they might receive their sight by the power of God. But to genuinely heal a person who had been born blind, it was believed that only the Messiah could perform such a miracle. Only the Son of God, the Savior, the promised Redeemer. Here we are in John 10, and people are saying, He did this miracle, so maybe He's not crazy. Maybe He's not demon-possessed at all. Let me share this quote as we get ready to wind down our time together from a prominent preacher in the 1800s, Octavius Winslow, who poses this question, who delivered up Jesus to die? Not Judas for money, not Pilate for fear, and not the Jews for envy, but the Father for love. Jesus was offered up to die because God so loved the world, as we all might know the verse, John 3, 16, that He would give His only begotten Son. It was God's love for humanity that caused Jesus to willingly lay down His life so that we could overcome sin, that he, we could experience His protection and His provision over sin, over death, over judgment, that we would experience new life, eternal life through Christ. Let's, let's flip the script for a moment as we consider what we've been talking about all this time, which is Christ's death and resurrection, His sacrifice. What about if the sheep would be willing to lay down their life for the shepherd? It sounds crazy, right? It wouldn't, you wouldn't expect it in the natural. You wouldn't expect that type of action from Sheep sheep are meant to be cared for, and as are you and I. The Good Shepherd cares for us, protects us, and helps us. But Paul writes in Galatians 2.20, a very interesting statement. So this is sometime after Jesus' words in John 10. He says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, so I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul, Paul opens up a, a world of thinking and theology here too with, with our faith that impacts us in an earth-shattering way. He says, I, I, don't, I don't exist now as I had before I came to faith in Christ. My old self is actually crucified. I've put that old self to death. I live by faith in the Son of God. Christ now lives in me. This earthly body, he says, I'm trusting is living by faith in Christ. Because he loved me and he laid down his life for me. It's fascinating. The sheep, Paul in this case, or you and I, laying down our life, voluntarily choosing to sacrifice our old life of sin, our old life of selfishness, and all of the things that went with it, crucifying it so that we might be resurrected to experience new life in Christ. As we continue... Our journey through the greatest event in history, the death and resurrection of Jesus. Let's remember that the Good Shepherd laid down his life for us. He had the authority to not only lay it down, but take it back up again. He did so in 
and he defeated every enemy that we would face. Death, judgment, sin. And now in return, we're called to reciprocate this selfless act of laying down our lives in surrender and in service to him. His resurrection. Sing it out. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound. Sing it out. His body bound and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah stood and all alone. Praise the name. Son of heaven, rose again, oh, trample death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. Yes, Lord, and praise the Lord. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord. In robes of white, the blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Yes, Lord, in robes of white. We wait for that day, oh God. The blazing sun shall pierce the night. And I will rise, and I will rise among the saints. My gaze, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face.
All right, thanks again for joining us today. I hope you have been blessed and inspired by a time of worship and in God's Word today. I hope that the reading of John 10 has spoken to your heart and you should reread a little bit more of it. Maybe read through the whole Gospel of John through the, through, as we go through the Easter season. It is powerful to hear Jesus' own words talking about his death and how he was willing to die for us. Maybe you've not heard this truth before and you don't know what all of this means to, to be forgiven, to have your sins forgiven, that the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. That applies to you and me and everyone that's lived or will ever live. Jesus' death and sacrifice means everything to us. And so reach out to us if you have questions, if you just want to know more about what we're talking about. We'd be glad to help you on your journey of faith. Let me pray. And maybe if you've not ever prayed to ask for God's forgiveness, you could simply repeat these words right where you are, in your heart, out loud. But just pray them genuinely today. God will hear you. Father, I thank you for forgiveness through faith in Jesus. I want to be made new. I want my sins forgiven. And I want to live for you. Help me by the power of the Spirit to glorify you and to be a part of your kingdom and your family. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that genuine prayer, simple as it was, God, I believe, has heard you, and He is only too glad to forgive you, to make you new, to make you a new creation in Christ, as Paul writes about. He says, old things are passed away. Isn't it great to figure that we can live a great new life in Christ, crucifying our old self? putting that stuff behind us. It may not all happen overnight either, but God helps us day by day. So be blessed this week. I pray God speaks to you and uses you to share the message of the love of Jesus with those that you meet. And we'll see you again here next Sunday. God bless.